Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Oh, that's bright light. Wow, what a great morning. This is a bar of soap. At last, the guarantee that you have been waiting for, God declares that this small product is guaranteed to work in all situations. A lifetime guarantee, as long as the consumer continues to apply this product, a miraculous transformation is guaranteed to happen. All spots and blemishes can be removed. Eyewitnesses testify that even those deep down stubborn stains dissolve in time. Such is the miraculous cleansing power of wonder soap. The Israelites swore by it. They used it in the desert for 40 years and their clothes never wore out. What an endorsement, wonder soap. But there's more. The very first application is guaranteed to make a world of a difference. Thereafter, it will be just as effective and regular usage is recommended for best results. Even the Bible speaks highly of it when it says, and I quote, I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. It even says, be clean, be white as snow. I will cleanse you from all impurities in Ezekiel 36, 25. Yes, wonder soap is the only soap that comes with a lifetime guarantee, in fact, an internal guarantee. In the depths of his godly sorrow over his sins, David understood that it was the washing of his creator that was needed for him to be cleansed of his transgressions of God's way of life. In the book of Psalms, David expresses profound details of his relationship with his creator. He looked forward to his Saviour coming to fulfil the purposes of cleansing and restoration. And David understood that his God was working to open the gates to everlasting life for human beings who would be cleansed and made whole, perfected as children of the great God. I recall in Psalm 23 that David concludes his description of his relationship with his shepherd his creator, by declaring that he would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David looked forward to eternal life, understanding that it would take God washing him and cleansing him of his sins to allow him to come into this inheritance. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In 1 Peter 1, 22, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. In Psalm 51, 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. In Matthew 5, 8, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. In Psalm 24, 4, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. In Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. In James 4.8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. In 1 John 1.6, If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us all from us from our sins. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So if you have your emblems, um, I'm just... Don't take them yet, but just take them in your own time and let's just prepare ourselves to receive his cleansing by our hearts by faith. Lord Jesus, I bow before you in humility and ask that you examine my heart today. Show me anything that is not pleasing to you and reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering my relationship with you. I know that I am your beloved child, having received you into my heart and life and having accepted your death as penalty for my sinfulness. The price you paid covered me for all time and my desire is to live for you. As I take the bread representing your life that was broken for me, I remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me and to all who will receive you. I can't begin to fathom the agonising suffering of your crucifixion. Yet you took that pain for me. You died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favour. Thank you that your death gave me life, abundant life and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, I too received the bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way as I take this cup, they're not as easy to open as they look. And in the same way as I take this cup representing your blood, poured out from a splintered cross, I realise that you were the supreme sacrifice for all my sin, past, present and future. Because of your blood shed for me and your body broken for me, I can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that I deserved. You took the punishment. Your pain was indeed my gain. And today I remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave me through the blood that you spilled. But while my relationship is secure with you, I know sin can break our fellowship at times. I'm still human and I often forget who I am and whose I am. You want to convict and correct me, not shame me. You love me like a perfect parent. You'll never disown me or leave me. You love me no matter what, but sin hurts both my heart and yours. So before I take my communion today, I'm asking you to truly search my heart and reveal hidden things for which to ask for forgiveness. Each time I take communion, Lord, I want to recommit my life, my heart, my thoughts and my everything to you. Fill me today with your powerful spirit. As I leave this place, help me to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that never grows old close to my heart. Help me to share its message faithfully as you give opportunity In your precious name, amen. We give Karen just a quick round of applause. That was an awesome message this morning. Absolutely fantastic. That message was prepared months ago. Months ago. You see, God knew today was Baptism Sunday. This is his day. 
It's his timing. And it was his timing to have that message on communion today about being cleansed. That is how our God works. This week, I've had a scripture on my heart about baptism and about Baptism Sunday. And when Jimmy left the room earlier, I asked the other two, is it, is it Nicod- Nicodemus, Nicodemus? And Jimmy walked in and started to read the exact scripture, which had been on my heart all week. Again, that's God. That is how he works. So I've just asked Jimmy if he could quickly read that out for us. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce some human life. but The Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Amen. And that is what we're doing today. We are living the word that Jesus spoke that day, that no one can come to the Father unless they are born again of spirit and water. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I welcome all the families that are here supporting the participants that are going to be baptized. Uh, This is a monumentous occasion. And it is one of celebration. And we thank you that you have come today to celebrate and join with them as they take this step. Um, I would like to welcome up Pastor Aaron to the stage to take us through the next bit. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. There we go. How's everybody? You good? You're all looking good. Just turn to the person next to you and just let them know that they're looking all right. I just wonder before we, before we move on, could you just put a hand on the person next to you? If you're around some people, maybe you don't know them, perhaps you should introduce yourself first. <laughs> just make sure everyone's got someone covered. We celebrate family and we celebrate community in this house. It's important. You could be doing a million other things on a Sunday, but the difference is this spirit that we feel in the room today. The difference is we have the living hope of Jesus Christ as we've sung Then came that final verse is my favourite verse. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Aren't you glad? So let's just pray for our brothers and sisters to our left and to our right. God, may we never grow tired in blessing the people around us. God, we ask that You would so bless these people, God, our families, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask, Lord God, that You would pour out a fresh blessing on them that they could not contain. We ask, Lord God, that You would meet them where they're at today. God, all You require of us is that we show up today in how we feel and in the journey that we're on, in the circumstances that we're at today. And You demand us in our entirety in this place, in what we're feeling, in what we're going through. And so God, we ask for our brothers and sisters in this room this morning that they would come to You in boldness and in childlike faith. They would come to you in the doubting and the fear and the unknown and they would just trust you. They would lean back into the loving arms of a beautiful Father. They would breathe deep and know that you are good. And Father, I thank you that you are good and you are faithful. And I ask Lord God that that, that you would pour out a blessing on them that they could not contain. It would be so embarrassing how blessed you've blessed them, Lord. God, financially, relationally, in their own clarity of their life's purpose with You, God, may they find You in a real and quick and authentic way in this season. We wanna pray for anyone that maybe can't, that feel like they can't connect with You or that You aren't speaking or communicating in this season. That is a lie from the enemy. And Lord, this morning, we bind up any blockages of the enemy. We bind up any opposition of the enemy. And Your Word says that our shield of faith extinguishes all fiery darts of the enemy. So this morning we stand with our brothers and sisters in the room today.
with our shield of faith and theirs, fully expectant that every dart of the enemy, every word, every accusation of the enemy is going to fall off and fall short. We are mindful that in your presence is fullness of joy. Where your presence is, there's liberty. Where your presence is, the mountains melt like wax. So we just thank you, Father, for blessing the people around and about us. We ask, Lord God, for a fresh touch, a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit in them, Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence that's here today. We would be remiss if we moved on when you weren't ready to move on. So Father, we're just gonna sit for a moment in your presence. You may wanna take a deep breath Just allow Him to wash over you this morning. If you're a tired and weary parent parent in this house, a mom or a dad, particularly pray for our single mums and dads, those who are perhaps grandparents and are filling the gap, we just pray and we release a refreshing over you this morning. God, would you come around every single person like only you can do, Refresh their soul, refresh their weariness, Lord. May they sleep well. May our children sleep well. God, if there's issues in the night, we just command the enemy to get its hands off our kids and our sleep, off our homes, off our attention, that we may focus on you and you alone. God, we thank you for every single person that's here today. For those that can't be here today, we declare healing in Jesus' name. We declare cancer gone, tumours gone, sickness gone in Jesus' name. That name that is above every other name. Father, for those that are unwell today, God, may they feel your tangible presence in their car, in their home, in their bed right now, Lord. Quicken their healing, we declare in Jesus' name. We all said... Amen and amen, Mel. Just a real sense this morning that there are a few people here whose hearts feel cold, feel frigid. You have been in previous times intimidated by a message, by something that someone said to you about judgment over your life, accused you. But the Lord's really saying to you that His perfect love is in you and with you, that there is no torment. There's actually been fear, a negative fear of God and a negative fear of death, of hell. And God is not about that. God is about a very positive love and reverence for him. And the Lord just wants to minister his love, his joy, his peace through his blood to wash you completely as it says in Hebrews 9, particularly to cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. To serve there means to worship, to minister to him. And when your conscience is clear, there is such a clarity in your heart. There is a purity in your heart to minister to the Lord. There's a purity to receive fresh revelation and truth, to be able to meditate in a way that you never have so that the past truly is in the past. The former things have passed away and that's what this is all about. We have been buried with him through baptism unto death, in order as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God the Father, that we too walk in newness of life. 
Thanks. Thank you, Mel. So this morning's going to look a little different. We're going to be worshiping. The team kind of took a a break, a bathroom break, a reset, and they've come back. They're ready for, for part two. Are you ready for part two? The goal of today is to celebrate with our baptizees. They're not our victims, they're our baptizees. And we want to, we, there's no better way to worship God and to love Him than, than to celebrate together as a church family. So we're going to dunk and we're going to sing and we're going to praise. And so can I encourage you to get a little bit rowdy? If you want to get out of your seats and come and gather and pray, please do that. If you want to come, if you've never experienced what water baptism is, then this is your day. You're in, you chose the right Sunday to come. So this is family time. This is time where we come and we just love on the people that are making this decision today. This is time where we just worship God because as we've heard this beautiful thread throughout today, this is more than just getting into a, we filled it with as much warm water as we can. Okay, guys, we, it's, it's not gonna be a spa or a hot tub, but we're, we're t- trying to take the chill out of it. But getting into these waters today, is symbolic and it's prophetic and it's, it's in obedience to what the Word of God says. And you know what? I'm really mindful. I'm going to pause there for a minute. Those who are getting baptised today, do you want to come forward and let's, let's welcome them. Let's cheer them on this morning. Do you want to come and line up over here? I just want to spend a few moments with you guys before we start. What's, what's really important for me is that we, we know what we are doing we don't want to be a place, it's like the blind leading the blind, where people just are doing things because that's just the cool thing to do. No, no, no. Jesus said, count the cost. And so this morning, I want to spend a few moments with you guys before you enter the waters of baptism. So let's pray together. Stretch forward your hands, church family, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would do a deep work. Thank you for blessing the waters with your presence this morning. Let this be like heaven on earth. We pray for everyone who is being baptised today. May there be a true deliverance as through the entrance into the kingdom of your glorious light. Let your power come upon them in a mighty way, Lord, that would change them and mark them forevermore. Fill them with your Spirit today, Lord God, and in a new way we ask in Jesus' Name. Amen and Amen. In just a few moments... you guys are going to enter into the waters of baptism. The waters of baptism have been blessed since Genesis chapter one. The Bible says that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters of the deep. In other words, the Holy Spirit was present over the waters and whatever the Holy Spirit is upon, He blesses. Since that moment in every nation, in every culture, every time period, water has been a blessed substance. Baptism is a symbol of Christ's burial and resurrection. Our entrance into the water during baptism identifies us with Christ's death on the cross, His burial in the tomb and His resurrection from the dead. We're growing in number. I want to read Colossians 2 from the message version this morning. Going under the water was the burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was the resurrection. God raising you from where the, from the dead as He did Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven the slate white clean, the old arrest warrant cancelled and nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. How cool is that version? This pool is not a mere symbol. It's not a ritual. It's not you guys just checking off the box. And I know from speaking to all of you that that's not the case this morning. When you go into the waters today, the Holy Spirit Himself will be present. Nowhere in Scripture is baptism mentioned and the Holy Spirit isn't present. Let me show you a few of these areas. Jesus is baptised in the Jordan and the Holy Spirit comes upon Him as a dove. The Israelites went through the Red Sea and Paul says that they were baptised into the sea and into the cloud, the cloud speaking of the Holy Spirit, filled them and passed through the entire camp. I want you to know today that what you're about to do is a full-blown encounter with God Himself. Go into those waters believing in faith 
that when you come up out of those waters, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Let's read what 1 Peter 3, 21 says. There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Christ Jesus. What's this saying? It's the resurrection of Christ that saves you and I. The waters do not save, Jesus saves. Baptism without covenant relationship with Christ is meaningless. Your conscience is going to be cleansed as you come up out of those waters of baptism this morning. Before you go in, it's important to know what He wants, what He's yearning for. Again, it's not a tradition, but this is an encounter. He wants everything. He wants your whole life your dreams, your failures, your plans, your insecurities, your sin, your doubt. He wants it all. He demands all because He gave it all. We can't do this today unless you count the cost. Jesus said in His Scripture, imagine a man who builds a tower and doesn't count the cost and he begins building it and cannot finish it and it brings shame, the Scripture says. Count the cost before you go into the waters today and I know you will have Baptism also connects us to the body of Christ, His people in the earth. And we are so excited as your church family to be gathered and to celebrate with you, baptised into His body. In baptism, there is a real sense of being joined together with the believers, not just participating in an individual act of our own. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13 says, For we were all baptised by one Spirit into one body. I'm done.